Uh, it's 7.04, and I'm going to call the Town of Norton Finance Committee meeting for Tuesday, May 31st, to order. And we will do a brief roll call. Paula? Here. Bonnie? Here. Steve? Here. Joe? Here. Zach? Here. I am here, and we are missing Yelena. Kevin, Bill, Jeff, and Cody. All right, fabulous. Um, before we get started, we got an email, so I'd like to read the email into the record um, so that we have it kind of available for the public. We received this email from Sandy Allerhead, uh, and it says, Dear members of the Finance Committee, I'm writing to ask the Town of Norton Finance Committee, FinCom, reconsider their vote to oppose Article 15 for the Spring 2022 Town Meeting. After watching your meeting on 523, it seems that FinCom's primary concerns were related to the financial impact of the article to the town. I understand that FinCom's primary role is to review the town's annual budget and to review town meeting articles from the perspective of how they impact the budget. Article 15 relates to a charter change with no financial implications to the town budget at this preliminary stage of consideration. Our charter sets aspirational goals for our town government. It cannot authorize spending nor mandate the automatic filling of any position created by the charter. There are several positions listed in our charter that are not currently filled. Article 15 falls into the category of general articles outside of budget articles that are required to be voted on by FinCom in order for them to be moved at town meeting, similar to the zoning articles that the committee previously voted on. Voting on Article 15 based on the financial implications would be like voting on the zoning articles based on their financial implications. Asking for a breakdown and cost analysis of adding a DPW director is premature at this stage. FinCom is voting to allow the town manager the option to pursue hiring a DPW director not authorizing him to do so. It doesn't guarantee the hiring of a DPW director, nor mandate anything about the qualifications of the DPW director, such as whether they need to be a professional engineer. The justification for allocating funds for the position of DPW director would have to be brought forward to FinCom and town meeting at a future date before any change could be made, just as with any other new position in town. While I remain a strong proponent for, proponent for creating a charter committee to review the charter as a whole, in the past that has been over a two-year process from the time the committee is first formed to the time that final vote takes place at the ballot. That seems like a long time to wait to make a long overdue and necessary change to our town government. Having worked with Lauren Goldberg in the past and knowing that she drafted the language of these charter changes, I feel confident that the language is well thought out and takes into account all of the necessary requirements to make this successful. I have listened to the members of this very group express frustration at the town departments making decisions in silos, at highway department projects that are completed on roads that are then torn up soon after to initiate water and sewer department projects. The decisions and plans of the water sewer department impact the infrastructure of our town. This in turn impacts potential economic, for economic development. Future plans and projects for sewer and water should not be made in a bubble, but should include all impacted areas of town government. The consolidation of multiple town departments under a single umbrella is exactly what this town needs, and approving Article 15 would move us closer to that objective. Respectfully, Sandy Allerhead. The red our correspondence um, so we can review uh, and decide if we want to revisit that article when we get to old business um, but before we do that Mike do you have anything else for us tonight I know we have a relatively light agenda I do um, if I can just share my screen let's see um, the first thing is um, Article 11. Is 
so when the article was um, originally presented, um, it's an amendment to the top paragraph, that's the existing, and down the bottom it was to add uh, five days, um, you know, for parents and um, husband and wife and child, but we forgot on the uh, original article, son-in-law and daughter-in-law are part of the uh, three days, and we forgot to uh, bring that down to the second part. So um, oh, okay. it's a, it's just a correction in the article, and I just wanted to see if you would uh, reopen and um, vote it with the correction. And this is Article 11? Yes. The chair would entertain a motion to reconsider Article 11. Madam Chair. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Bonnie. I thought we have to be like official and like flesh this out a little, make it worth our while. Um, I move that we reconsider Article 11. <laughs> All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Right. You would right. think there is 22. Does anyone else's audio sound like we're calling from the lost city of Atlantis, or is that just my special pleasure for this evening? I think that's just you. Everyone sounds fine on my end. Um, right. When we talk over each other, there's problems, but for the most part, it's fine. Okay. All right. There is a motion and a second to reconsider Article 11. Let us vote, and then we can discuss. Paula. Sorry. Yes. Bonnie. Yes. Steve. Yes. Joe. Yes. Zach? Yes. I too am a yes, so that's unanimous. All right, now we are reconsidering Article 11 uh, to include this updated language that has the term son-in-law and daughter-in-law included in this new section with three days of paid leave. Does anyone have additional questions? All right, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve this article as, I'm sorry, to recommend this article to town meeting as amended. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Bonnie. I move that we recommend Article 11 as amended on the screen. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any additional questions? Hearing none, we will vote again. Paula. Yes. I said yes. Did you not hear me? I did not hear you. Sorry, oh. Paula. Bonnie. Oh. I heard her, so just so you know, Amy. Yes. <clears throat> Gosh. Uh, Steve. Yes. Right. I can't hear you yes. either. Oh, okay. there you're a yes too. Okay. Um, Joe. Yes. I'm also a yes in case you can't hear it. I, I can't you. hear anybody. Zach, I heard you, Joe. Now, Zach. Yes. I am also a yes. That is unanimous, six to zero. I'm switching to computer audio and hanging up on this thing. You kind of sound like a pilot, Amy. All right, is that any better? Because mm. you're a lot better. Yeah. Usually yeah. the phone is way better than the computer audio. I don't know what was going on with that. All right. Now that we can all hear each other, I was having flashbacks to that hybrid meeting for a few minutes, mm -hmm. but. We shall never speak again. <laughs> What's next, Mike? Excuse me. The only other thing I had is budget supplements. Um, I just texted the superintendent to see if he was coming on. Um, we're waiting for an update. But 
Okay. Well, while we give him a few minutes, we could determine if we would like to reconsider the DPW article, which if I am remembering correctly, looking at my old list is article 15. Um, do people have thoughts or feelings about reconsidering the DPW article? Um, question, are we meeting again before town meeting? Can we, or do we meet on Monday? It's Tuesday. I know, town meeting is Tuesday. Do we meet on Monday? Uh, I don't think we have planned a meeting for Monday evening. Have we, Mike? We haven't, but if you are going to meet, it might be better to meet on Monday night rather than I hate meeting at town meeting myself. I hate meeting at town meeting also. And I saw the note from Michelle saying, do you want to post a meeting for Tuesday? And my immediate gut reaction was, of course, I don't want to post a meeting for <laughs> Tuesday. Um, the, the reason I ask is, um, given that we have so few people and there was some spirited discussion last week about it, I, you know, trying to figure out if it makes sense to wait, but it doesn't. I mean, my problem with that is we could have six people again next Monday, but it could be six different people. There is yeah. no way, based on our current attendance track record, for me to guarantee anyone will be here. That is and perfect. next Monday, we can end up with five people and not be able to make it happen. And I agree. And even if we meet on Monday, the minutes and all that, the warrants and all that have already been printed, right? It would have to be a, a description to the townspeople. I'm just not a fan of that. Right. I mean, the warrant is already posted with our no recommendation so we can move the article without recommending it in writing um we just need to decide if we're going to then i uh, make a motion that we reconsider article 15 on is it the annual or the special town meeting? the annual the annual town meeting does it have second. second all right i have a motion and a second bonnie what's your question the question was does it have to be someone reconsider it that was part of the original vote and just confirming that Joe was part of the original vote. I don't believe it has to be considered. No, it doesn't. Okay. Sorry. That would be really, really hard to keep track of. <laughs> We'd have to do that on the honor system because I would have no way of knowing. Okay. Um, all right. There is a motion and a second on the floor to reconsider Article 15, uh, the Charter Amendment for a Department of Public Works. Uh, is there any discussion before we vote on reconsidering? Uh, I just have one thing for the record uh, and for the minutes, which was um, I was opposed to uh, the uh, article last week, not uh, because of what it contained, but because of how it came about. Um, but after reading and once again hearing um, Sandy Ollerhead's uh, spirited, I guess, email, um, I, I will um, vote to to approve it. I still don't like that it didn't come out of the committee, but um, the fact that it will take two years to do that and we are in desperate need of a DPW re resonates with me. <clears throat> All right. Any other questions or comments before we vote to reconsider? Hearing none. We will vote. This is just to reconsider, and then we'll vote again on the DPW itself. Paula? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Steve? Yes. Joe? Yes. Zach? Yes. And I am a yes, so that is unanimous. All right. Conversation about the DPW itself. Thoughts, questions, hysterical remarks? Let me have them. Yeah, and I don't think I've changed my opinion, but I think if, if somebody from the town brings something forward, we should reconsider that my vote was. But I just don't think there's still there isn't enough. And I agree with or I understand what um, the individual said. Uh, I still think there's financial implications and we should really assess that before we start making decisions based on feel good and potential direction and then costs later on. I understand where you're coming from. I can tell you that in response to Sandy Allerhead's note, I did receive an email back from Bill Rotundi, who still feels strongly that we should have pro forma financial information before moving forward. Um, well, I am inclined to agree that I would like to see some sort of financial modeling 
on this. I also um, feel strongly that this is a significant change and that it should go to town meeting and be voted on for the voters of our legislative branch to decide if they want to move forward or not. Madam Chair. Zach. Uh, I agree with you that, you know, some modeling would be uh, would be good, but I don't think this is the place and time for it. I think this needs to be passed. And then that becomes the responsibility of Mr. Units, who will present the financial numbers to the Finance Committee, and we can make a decision at that time. Right now, all we're asking, all we're voting on is to, to implement a DPW. At that point, uh, unfortunately, Mike, it's going to fall on your shoulders to make the numbers work. I heard shoulder pads are coming back in style, Mike. We'll get you some cushioning. Um, Madam Chair. Right. Go ahead, Paula. Um, I know we don't have um, Keith on or anyone from the water, but I know like a couple of folks from the Water Commission were on our last meeting, but I, Keith was not present at all. I'm wondering what his thoughts are on this, um, this charter change. If Mike, could you speak to that? You're on mute, Mike. You're still on mute. Oh, there you go. I lost you. Um, I I think Keith is open to it. I'm not. A, I don't really want to speak for him, but um, I I think he is. Okay. Um. Yeah. My vote is not going to change. I voted yes last week. I will be voting yes again for this. I think that um, more often than not, streamlining things can be a cost savings in the long run. Um, and I think that this would be great to bring forward to the townspeople at the meeting next week and have them decide. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Bonnie. I voted no last week um, because I was thinking in terms of how it would impact the budget. And I do recognize to Sandy's point that it is a bit premature for that um, and also respect um, the lengths the Charter Commission went to to make recommendations, and one of their major ones was this consolidation of departments. Um, and remembering that a lot of people said this was a change they agreed with, but, and then they voted against the Charter, <laughs> the Charter changes as a whole. Um, I think it does make sense for us to put it before the town, um, so I'll be changing my vote to yes. Okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, just one point of clarification, Mike, if I recall correctly, Keith was part of the committee that put the presentation together, correct? He was one of the people that was consulted, yep. Yeah. Oh, so it was consulted, but not, not part of putting it together? Um, well, he, his input, you know, I know that Michael sat down and, uh, you know, we talked with Keith and uh, Water and Soar and so he, he was uh, involved in the conversation. Thank you. And, and I think the uh, point is, um, even if the town said votes in favor of this, um, as everyone said, it all comes down to the finances. In the end, you have to come back to the finance committee and show a budget that you have the money to put this in place at some point. So it may not happen right away, um, but it, that is something to consider. Very good point. Any other questions? All right, hearing none, I would entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Bonnie. I move that we recommend Article 15 of the annual town meeting uh, personal bylaw amendment. No, is that the same one? No. No. 15 is no. charter amendment and bylaw amendment for DPW. Ah, yes. Charter amendment and bylaw amendment for DPW. Sorry about that. No problem. I'll second that. All right, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you, Joe. 
Any other questions or discussion before we vote? Hearing none, Paula. Yes. Bonnie. Yes. Steve. No. Joe. Yes. Zach. Yes. And I am a yes, so that will pass five yeas, one nay. All right. I guess Michelle's going to need to update those uh, recommendations, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I'll let her know. All right. What else do we have? The the only other thing you had was um, the budget supplements, and. Uh, we don't have the numbers. Am I sharing my screen? No. Yeah. No. All right, give me a second. Um, and this is what we had, but we we're waiting uh, for the school department um right on their numbers so i don't know if you want to uh, schedule a meeting for next monday and i'll let you might be at that awards night did somebody mention it was awards night yeah it is senior awards night so yeah. i'm sure dr bayetta is probably there okay did, did, uh, we get any, did we get any kind of written backup supporting these numbers um he they were working on that Okay. Why don't we schedule a short meeting for next Monday? I would much rather meet for half an hour next Monday. And maybe we can get some of our minutes organized. These minutes are the bane of my existence. Um, I know I sent out one set. I believe they refer to Paula as Miss Gordon repeatedly. Um, <laughs> I almost stroked out with everyone being referred to as Mr. and Miss with a period and no space before the last name. Like, I will take another pass at seeing what we can do with what we have and we will go from there. But I will try to get them out to everyone with time to look them over before we reconvene Monday night. Anything else for us, Mike? Nope. Just uh, on the night of the meeting, so you and the vice chair will be sitting on stage, correct? Yes. Bonnie and I are very excited to bring our special brand of you know what to the stage at town meeting. Well, Bonnie's had plenty of practice at seconding, uh, make, so uh, she can be in charge of that part. Yeah. Perfect. Do we have we have the FinCom letter? Oh, or thank you so much for saying that, Steve. I do have it. Let us look at that. I will share my screen. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Thank the worst. You. I Steve. had it open and ready to go, and then I completely like spaced. Steve, you're thinking at the 19th hall. Here we go. You know how hard it is to keep all these people quiet. <laughs> Steve, I see the palm landing on your head, so I don't think that's your background. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Excellent. We basically took last year's report, added some things. Um, one of the things that we did was we pulled out, well, we did our best to pull out fixed and shared expenses because as our debt service increases with the debt exclusion, it's skewing the, like, the schools versus town piece of the growth of the budget. So it looks like the town's budget is growing exponentially more than the schools and it's the debt service. So you'll see farther down. I'll just scroll down real quick to show you that we broke it out as general government, public schools, 
and fixed and shared expenses. Um, so I'll go back up so people can keep reading, sorry. Somebody just wave at me when you need me to scroll up. And one thing as you are reading that, um, I'm reading the part about the balanced budget, um, that was helped by um, the Hicks fund went from 100,000 to 200,000. So that enabled oh. to balance the budget out. Can you scroll a little bit in, please? Who's Paula Daniels? I thought it was Paula Gordon. <laughs> Somebody tells me Chris Daniels would have a problem with that. Paula Crosby. <sighs> All right, so I want to go back up. Is everyone finished or do you need another minute? I'm all set. Okay, I'm everyone dead. seems to be all set. Um, so maybe we should say when we're using 700,000 in free cash that we're also using 200,000 from the Hicks fund. Go back up. Just have to find it. Have we ever mentioned that thing? The only thing, the only thing I'm concerned though, with mentioning the Hicks fund is do a lot, do any of us know really how that works if we're asked that question in town? 
meeting. I know we were supposed to get something from the select board last year describing how it works and decisions and who's on there, and we never received that. So what I know is that the Hicks Fund was established many, 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 many moons ago for the care and maintenance of our cemeteries. And that, that fund has, what, like over a million dollars in it now, right, Mike? Probably a lot more than that. Yeah, several million dollars. I don't know. I don't know because I'm really not part of it. And they can spend a certain percentage of the interest that's earned. <clears throat> and I'm not sure what that is either. Mike, who's they? That's that's one of the questions that I have. I, um, who's making the, the The Hicks Fund is managed by the treasurer and the select board. And uh, they have a um, financial advisor they work with. Madam Chair, I, I was speaking to one of the select person last week about it. There was a meeting, I believe, last week about the Hicks Fund. I believe it started in the 1800s with $4,000, and the balance is currently of over $10 million from what I understand. Yeah, I, that sounds it, right, Zach. But they're, they're, cap, they're capped out at, there's a certain formula you can take out, and I think the cap is 200000 uh, so that fund just continues to keep uh, growing. I wouldn't bother putting it. You don't put everything in here. You, yeah. know, you, don't, you don't have ambulance in here. and. Yeah, it's. I think that's fine. I mean, I guess, Mike, the, the broader question is, like, not that I'm looking to knock that fund down to nothing, but does it just keep gathering interest and income in perpetuity? And at what point do we have, you know, 40, 50 million dollars, like an entire annual budget trapped in this fund that we can only get 200 grand a year out of. And is there a mechanism to change that? I don't, yeah, I don't know what you need to be honest with you. That, that's exactly the conversation we were having last year that we were supposed to get the answers. I guess there was a slide deck that would explain all of that projections and number of years. Well, maybe this is a great topic to add to our next joint meeting agenda on the 13th of June with the select board and the school committee. I agree. Not that, you know, I don't want to see us take so much out that we're like damaging the interest earning potential of the fund. But if we're earning orders of magnitude more interest than we can ever touch in a, you know, given period of time, it, it seems very silly that we can't do anything about it. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Zach. Maybe to next week's meeting, Mike, if you can have the treasurer come on or, or, or one of the selectmen come on that understands this because there is a formula and I don't think we can just take whatever we want out of it. It's a, it's a locked in formula. That the original person who set up this trust back in the 1800s. So I think somebody needs to explain that to us if that's possible for next Monday, it should be a short meeting. Uh, maybe it's worth uh, listening to. That's my understanding as well, is that this would have happened a long time ago if it were possible, but it's not like, like someone said earlier that we can only take out a percentage or the select board or the so, committee authorized to take a percentage of the interest. So like in another hundred years, there's gonna be $80 million in this fund and we can only touch 200 grand a year? Uh, I would say no, because when it started with $4,000, we weren't taking 200 grand a year. There is a formula. I don't know what that formula is, okay. but it's a percentage of the 10 million. I mean, you can do the math, whatever that is. Uh, yeah. Is it 2%? Is it- uh, Definitely you know? need to figure that out. Especially now with interest rates up as much as they are. Okay. So Mike, if we could have someone either join us next Monday or add this to the agenda for the 13th, because we know that the select board members will be in attendance, that would be terrific. Is everyone okay with this report? I am going to apologize again for not having it out sooner to everyone. It literally was finished at like 3.30 this afternoon. Um, because Mike, do we need to vote to approve this? 
No. No, we can just send it to Michelle and we're all yeah. set. Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead, Steve. I think you guys did a good job on this letter. I do have just one statement on there. And sure. Asked historically, have we shown the reductions from the requested budgets? There's a paragraph in here that's showing that we, the request was X and we cut down to Y. I think that was in last year's, wasn't it? Honey, do you remember if this was in last year's? Or Paula, does anybody remember? And then I don't, and I know in the past, Mike, we have voted on this um, with a formal vote. So I didn't know if it was actually required or not. So Steve, are you saying there's something there that shouldn't be, or there's not? No, 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 there just, from my, be? just from my perspective, but it's for consistency, that, that paragraph right there, has that been in there before where we show the actual reduction? Yeah, right here. it was in last year's. Okay, so. okay. You, you could just vote to uh, recommend submittal of the report. Given that all of our names are on it, that might be prudent. Sure. <laughs> Madam Chair. Bonnie. I move that we recommend submittal of this uh, FinCom report to uh, Michelle to be distributed at town meeting, right? Is it distributed at town meeting or does it just go in the town report? It goes in the, the book and it goes, I think it goes in the front of the, the warrant. I believe so too, because it describes the process for this right. year's budget. Uh, second. All right, there's a motion and a second. Any other questions? Hearing none, we will vote. Paula? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Steve? Yes. Joe? Yes. Zach? Yes. And I am a yes. So that is unanimous. All right, I will send this over to Michelle as soon as we're done here. Anything else? No? All right. I will make a motion to adjourn. All right. A motion and a second to adjourn. Any other conversation? Hearing none, we will vote. Paula? Yes. Bonnie? Yes. Steve? Yes. Joe? Yes. Zach? Yes. And I am yes. So that is unanimous. Yay! Have a great evening, everyone. It's still light out and everything. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye.